Hello again. This is episode four, season one of Project Life Goal. Today we're working on the deburring of all the components for the vertical stabilizer. I have not finished building the table for the DRDT2 yet to be able to do the skin dimpling, but that will be the next major task. Let's go ahead and get started with the time-lapse footage and I'll add in some comments because there were definitely some lessons learned on this one. So here I'm using easy burr tools to do the deburring of the holes. These definitely save time compared to a rotodrive uh, deburring tool. What I did find though is that these easy burrs are a little bit persnickety. It definitely takes some practice and you need to develop a technique that's easy to <clears throat> over deburr and actually create a chamfer on the holes. But it definitely saves time the fact that you can do the front and the back side of those holes in relatively one operation. So I continued to keep using them throughout the project and I just had to keep going back and forth and checking both sides of the hole, see how it was doing and then adjust my technique accordingly. And they certainly help as well uh, when you've got tight quarters such as on the inside of the ribs and the spars. It'd be hard to get the rotodrive deburring tool in there um, and, and complete the operation quickly. So definitely a time saver. I would recommend them. It just takes practice for sure. So this rear spar doubler with how thick it is in the punching process that Vans uses, it leaves some pretty harsh edges. So having a good set of files, a wide variety, is definitely going to be required if you're going to undertake this endeavor as well. In hindsight, I almost wonder if I would have been better off getting out some sandpaper and going through a few various grits but the file did work, just took some time. Having a couple drills like I do here definitely help speed up the process as you don't have to spend time changing back and forth between the 1 8 and 3 30 second bits uh, not only for the drilling operations that we did before but also for this uh, deburring operation with those easy burr bits given the quality of the vans kits with their pre-punched holes and the only real operation being match drilling uh, i think going the cordless approach is definitely advantageous you don't have to drag around an airline. So if you're gonna go with an RV7, it would be my recommendation to stick with cordless tools. I was using a rotary tool here with a conical shaped fine grinding stone to do the, the nooks and the crannies of the ribs and the spars. Um, in hindsight, I should have done this operation uh, last. There was a lot that the scotch Bright wheel on the bench grinder actually was able to do, and I would have just had to do some final touch-ups. So I definitely wasted a little bit of time by doing this operation first. And I think going forward, before I even do fluting, I would actually take care of doing the deburring first because those marks from fluting, obviously they change the, the shape of the metal and so then you have to come back and, and touch up the valleys.
Plane Lady is another Vans aircraft builder documenting the process here on YouTube. She's building an RV-10 and recently posted a video of a great tip that she found on the Vans forums another builder had shared. The essence is that you take a scotch Bright wheel and then you cut it into pie-shaped pieces that you can then turn into conical shaped pieces and attach to the mandrel on your rotary tool and it looks like it really definitely speeds up the process when you're working with those tight quarters and the nooks and crannies on the ribs and the spars. So that's something that I will definitely be doing going forward I'm just waiting for those uh, sacrificial scotch Bright wheels to arrive. I'll go ahead and stick a link to her video so you can watch it because she details the process of making those and then also I will put a link to the forum where she got the idea so you can read the original post. So you'll notice that I actually have two different Scotch-Brite wheels on my bench grinder. One of them is a medium and the other one is a fine. I would recommend doing this. That medium wheel is a little on the aggressive side in my opinion, but it's good for the, the stainless parts and the much thicker aluminum parts. For the, the ribs with how thin they are, I, I think it's best to use the fine wheel on those. And in case you haven't done so already, go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel so you can follow along. Make sure you click that bell so you get alerts when I post new videos. And uh, if you're enjoying these videos, hit that like button for me uh, so I know I'm doing a good job for you guys. And leave a comment below if you've got advice or questions. I didn't previously have a bench grinder before starting this process, so when I was looking for one, I wanted one that was variable speed, just because I know all these parts were fragile and you know prone to damage when they're grabbed by the wheels. So this variable speed delta bench grinder has actually been quite nice to use. If you don't already have a bench grinder and you're looking for a new one as part of your build process, I would definitely get the variable speed varieties. Alright, we'll wrap up here with some real-time footage of the bench grinder working on the ribs. A uh, couple of closing remarks, just a couple of items that I noted. I went ahead and I purchased this sheet metal deburring tool. Uh, it definitely has a very steep learning curve on it. It left a couple of nice gouges because of my inexperience with it. Um, I think it's probably best suited for just very thin uh, aluminum parts. Another reason to do the deburring of these ribs before you flute them is so that you can actually use this tool. Um, but we got through it anyways. I very much did enjoy the this process. Uh, even though deburring is, I can already tell I'm going to spend a lot of time on it in the, in the project. What we have coming up next, uh, I already did rough up all the pieces in preparation for priming. I'm going to prime all these off camera because we do have a new camera now that we'll be using going forward. It did arrive so I'll hopefully be able to get you guys some better quality footage. Uh, but I don't want to get over spray on it so I'm going to be doing all that stuff off camera. I'll take pictures for you guys. With that we'll see you guys next time for the dimpling process. Thanks!